I know what you're thinking. What's that? A hat? Crazy, funky, junky hat? Overslept? Hair and sightly? Trying to look like Kieran Knightley? We've been there. We've done that. We see right through your funky hat. Um, and you're not wrong, but that's not why we're here. We're here because Bridget Jones' Diary seems to be regarded as a rom-com classic, and I haven't seen it, and I'd like to fix that today. <laughs> I'm excited to watch it. I hope you guys are ready to have a good time, but before I hit play, I do want to take a quick moment to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. As most of you guys know by now, Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs who want to stand out and succeed online. And honestly, whether you're just starting out or you're already managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it incredibly easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything. From products to content to time, all in one place and all on your own terms. You can completely personalize your website with their new guided design system called Squarespace Blueprint, where you can choose from professionally curated layout and styling options to create a website that you love. You can build your online presence from the ground up and tailor it to your brand or business and it'll be optimized for every device. You can upload video content, organize your video library, and showcase your work on beautiful video pages. If you want, you can also use your website to sell merch and with flexible payment options, checkout will be seamless for your customers. And their integrated SEO tools mean you're going to show up more often to more people so you can grow the way you want. Honestly, with Squarespace, you can make your idea, brand, or business stand out online. So if you want to build the website of your dreams, you can go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then once you've created your website and you're happy with it and you're ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com slash fictional darling to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. A huge thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And now back to the movie. I did not realize there were three Bridget Jones. I'm also dying at like 2001, 2004 being normal time limits between movies and then them coming back in 2016, <laughs> getting the gang back together again. Amazing. My mom, a strange creature from a time when pickles on toothpicks This camera still angle is giving Paddington. <laughs> I feel like the camera guy like fell over. Oh, look at her Christmas vest. Great. I was wearing a carpet. She's wearing a vest I would unironically thrift at the thrift store and be like, hell yes, a new Christmas vest. It's, I think, the matchingness of it. If you wore it with a different skirt, you could make it work. It is a lot, but that doesn't mean it's too much. It's really cute. Not my uncle. Job. Someone who insists I call him uncle while he gropes my ass. Girly, you just got assaulted at your mother's own party. You gotta come up with an excuse to get out of this next year. Maybe this was the mysterious Mr. Right I've been waiting my whole <laughs> life to meet. Well, considering he's played by Colin Firth, you're probably not wrong. <laughs> oh. Maybe not. Why, because he got the memo for a fun Christmas sweater? You are not gonna judge this man because he's wearing a reindeer sweater. That's cute, that's fun. I do not need a blind date, particularly not with some verbally incontinent spinster who smokes like a chimney, drinks like a fish, and dresses like her mother. Yummy. Okay, he could have said that a lot nicer. <laughs> he didn't know she was listening. I do think, unfortunately, I will be defending Mark, and that is only because he's played by Colin Firth. But we're not gonna unpack that. That will be a later unpacking situation. You get frustrated when people try to set you up. He didn't know she would be standing right there. He wouldn't have said it to her face. Terribly mortifying, unfortunate, awful. Maybe you need a book club. A book club and some practice with communication. Because that conversation with Mark could have gone a whole lot differently if you just like bonded over the fact that neither of you wanted to get set up and it's awkward all around. Like you didn't need to immediately throw out all your vices to that dude. He could have learned them slowly as time went on. I decided to take control of my life. Resolution number one. Ooh. Obviously we'll lose 20 pounds. Not her being 136 pounds and saying she's obviously gonna lose 20. What you want? I have to disconnect from the Love Actually universe because <laughs> my first reaction was the Prime Minister. Morning, Myrtle. Daily call from Jude, best friend, head of investment at Breitling's bank, who spends most of her time trapped in the ladies' toilet. Oh well, yeah, she does. <laughs> she better get out of there before she's trapped forever. I cannot believe she was typecast as the woman who cries in a bathroom. I say that, I know I just watched Dirty Filthy Love and she was in it and she was not crying in a bathroom, but it's weird that she had two characters known for crying in the bathroom. Thank you for calling Professor Leavis. The F.R. Leavis, who wrote Mass Civilization and Minority Culture? Mm-hmm. The, the F.R. Leavis who died in 1978? No, the other one, his, his uh, third cousin. Appalled by management's blatantly sizest attitude to skirt. Fair, but Maybe we shouldn't. <laughs> They're 
was a smile there. Ooh. You also cannot date your boss, girly. What if it goes terribly wrong and then you don't have a job? How are you gonna pay the rent on that apartment that's very large and nice? I'm stressed already. <laughs> Do you know how many people would kill for this job? She's not flirting with her boss. She's flirting with disaster. I am in love with the blue computer yes, like stuff. That and that was an appropriate thing to send out in a workplace environment? Oh my goodness. Ah, what the hell? Do you not have HR? I know you're fine with it because you're flirting with him. I guess they've been flirting back and forth. This is a workplace environment, y'all. His first move was grabbing your ass. He didn't even take you out for a coffee. He didn't even ask if you wanted coffee. You have been sexually harassed at the workplace, ma'am. It's just wild because somewhere in this city, within this narrative, Colin Firth roams free, thriving, having a grand old time. And you're settling for your butt getting grabbed in an elevator. Don't settle. Colin Firth is out there somewhere. Then totally ignore Daniel. Are we sure we want to get dating advice for Moaning Myrtle? Can we talk about the guy cosplaying Jack Harkness in the background there, though? It really only applies to him. <laughs> <laughs> She's killing me. I don't know if I have the secondhand embarrassment capabilities to survive this party. What do you think? She only uh. caught the last part. I can't believe you work at a place where they care about what you say. You're so lucky. <laughs> Natasha is a top attorney and specializes in family law. Bridget works in publishing and used to play naked in my puddling pool. No, you did not just say that. That man is gorgeous. Just give me time. <laughs> he does not have eyes for her at all. It's been months since I watched Love Actually, but just the existence of Colin Firth and Hugh Grant in this film, I'm like immediately picturing them with their love interests from that movie. So it's like, obviously Colin Firth doesn't have eyes for you, Natasha. His heart belongs to someone else. Listen, you don't know what the loser I had, do you? Uh, yes. uh, this guy has assumed my role at the party, which is the person who has learned where the bathroom is, and that is the only thing they will be offering people is the directions to the bathroom. You and me are the same, buddy. <laughs> Kafka's Motorbike, the greatest book of our time. I can't believe we went with that as the tagline. I know we were just making fun of it, like, I don't know, five minutes ago, but perhaps that tagline should get made fun of. I don't think you could just claim that. Except for your books, Mr. Rushdie, which are also very good. Okay, that's just the guy that knows where the bathrooms are. Mr. Tits Perfect? Mr. Oh my god. <laughs> Tits Perfect. I'm gonna like, don't tell me she says that out loud. I don't want to hit play. I'm terrified to hit play. Fitzherbert. Uh, okay. Thank you, Brenda. That's how I'm feeling. Colin Firth. That's how I'm feeling. I don't know why I'm saying his full name like he's Olivia Coleman. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Apparently I used to um, run around naked in his paddling pool. All right, bitch you did, you dirty bitch. Don't smile. Don't smile. That's a red flag, girl. You have pink contact lenses in, or why are you missing these red flags? Knew him from Cambridge. He was a maid. Then what? Then Mark saw him interact with other human beings and said, yikes, he's kind of handsy and a walking red flag. And then Mark got the heck out. I made the somewhat catastrophic mistake of mm. introducing him to my fiance. I swear those stories have to be switched. Those stories have to be switched. Mark wears reindeer sweaters at a Christmas party and you're grabbing girls' butts in the elevator. Suspicious. That is your boss. I guess I should be saying, you're her boss, sir. This is a very silly little dress. For me, absolutely enormous panties. <laughs> She's wearing a silly little dress over her silly little panties. Sorry you can't appreciate the genius of a good granny pant. It's unfair how swoopy his hair is. And now it's the winter of my life and I haven't actually got anything of my own. No real career. And yet you're still alive, which means you still have time, ma'am. Matching necklace and earrings. She does make a great assistant. Just promise me we don't have to sit in any little boats and read poncy poetry to each other. That sounds like a very fun date, though. You do the boats, I'll do the tea. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Y'all gotta stop running into each other like this. <laughs> yeah, there was nothing to say, because it would have had to be about the hair, and we weren't gonna be rude. <laughs> oh, they actually are having a lovely time reading Ideal Date right there. There was a young woman from Ealing. Why can everyone on their on their own boats hear you, sir? Have you ever heard of this amazing thing called Peace and Quiet? It's so good. Like, 
you should try it sometime. Marcus falling for her. Do you love me? Shut up or I'll do it again. I gotta go back to town. On a Sunday? No, the meeting's first thing tomorrow. I've gotta work on some figures. But you did just ask if I love you, so I realized how serious this is and I gotta book it. Oh well. The full legally blonde approach. <laughs> oh no. We gotta back out of this party. This isn't legally blonde. We can't just commit to the bunny ears. I hope he's good enough for our little Bridget. I think I can say with total confidence, absolutely not. Well, I'm sure he'd say the same about you. <laughs> Mark is like, I'm sorry, what? No, we gotta get to the bottom of this, Mark. I would like your name cleared. Oh. <laughs> She's owning it, though. <laughs> I thought you said she was thin. I know it was supposed to be a line to insinuate that he's talked to her about her, but like that line? <laughs> I feel like I say this every time we watch any rom-com type of movie that was set in like the early 2000s. But if you survived the early 2000s, you deserve compensation. The hell was that? Look, you're miserable, right? And that's really sad. But you live in a walkable community, which is exciting for you. I wanted, I wanted you to be the first to know that uh, we're engaged. And she's fine with what you had going on? <laughs> All right, good, we do need a new job, solid. Your mom might have connections. Why do you want to be in television? Well, I've realized that I can't work for my boss that I was screwing while he's getting engaged to someone else. Also, he was touching my butt in the elevator. I've got to leave my current job because I've shouted my boss. Fair enough. Start on Monday. We'll see how we go. Well, honesty is the best policy. Hopefully, he doesn't want to shag you. I want you pointing a hose. I want you sliding down the pole and then go straight into the interview. Great. I think you were doomed from the start there, I'm not gonna lie. Right, everyone, this is Bridget. You may have recognized her bottom from the news. You really ought to hurry up and get sprogged up, you know, old girl. Times are running out. Tick tock. Is it too late for her to leave you? Why is it there are so many unmarried women in their 30s these days, Bridget? Oh, you settled for rock bottom. The rest of us don't have to. I like you. <sighs> Very much. Dying. Uh, apart from the smoking and the drinking. He's been falling for you along the way as you've been very awkward. Or as he put it, not great at public speaking. He has seen some of your worst moments here. <laughs> yeah? Can you please help me? Yeah, what do you need? We need to get this first snake out. We need to what? We have a snake in the... In the house. No, on the floor. Right? So sorry, Colin Firth. I'll be back. Oh, that's not right. Hello. <laughs> The snake has been relocated from pool to pond, and also five hours have passed since then. Um, but here we are. I'm kind of obsessed with whoever decided to just put a random thing of string lights into this tree. It's barely woven into the branches. They sort of just threw it on there like a spider web and called it a day. Jeremy's had the most brilliant idea. Right. Why is she snapping like that? Is he a dog? No. He doesn't re reply to snapping. That was the worst snap I've ever done. Today we've learned my snap has no snap to it. Pathetic. So sorry. <laughs> Just as you are. Where yes. You? Not thinner, not cleverer, not slightly bigger breasts. As she is. The government want to extradite him home where he'll certainly be executed. Today is the decision. Oh, that's exciting. With absolute respect, I'm totally here for her getting a shot. But do we want to give her this shot right now? I feel like you're throwing her out there without any training. Did the others get interviews? I don't know. Actually, nobody got interviews. So how do you know? Because I was defending him and I told him not to give any interviews. Him. I'm really hoping he didn't. Action. Not him going on to give an interview after he told his client not to do interviews. Perfect. I don't think so. This recipe is looking very difficult. Once you gotta pull in string, it's no longer a recipe. You're doing arts and crafts. Hello, darling. Hi, mom. I just wanted a bit of a chat. Between both of them ending up on air, they're making it seem very easy to just get a job on air. And I know it's probably not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's always the door is open. walking in <laughs> on a mess. Happy birthday. Thank oh. you. He knows her birthday. What are we going to do about this dinner then? We're gonna order delivery. Uh, congealed green gums. 
is Cape Berry Gravy, actually. Oh, yeah. Is it? It looks like you ground up grasshoppers. Oh, a cooking date. Wouldn't by any chance Please. have any beetroot cubes, would you? Lower your expectations in this kitchen. Delicious. Really. I can't believe she forced them to eat this. I thought they were gonna pour that down the drain. Chalk it up to a waste. Oh no. Your friends love you. They love you. Don't lose your friends. To Bridget, who cannot cook, <laughs> but who we love, just as she is. Oh, I love that so much. Y'all are killing me, but we do. <laughs> we love you just as you are, Bridget. Who? Moaning Myrtle, we don't let him in. That's not a let in. That's a, actually no one's at home right now. Situation, you don't let him in. I can't stop thinking about you. How's your fiance? You're the only one who can save me, Bridge. I need you. Without you, 20 years. You're the only one who could save me? <sighs> in the trash with the blue soup. Whenever I see that skimpy little skirt on TV, I just close my eyes and listen to all the intelligent things you'll say. So he saw her on the news with Mark, and now he's showing up? Suspicious, we see right through you. Don't you dare. <laughs> I'm going now. Oh my god. I should have done this years ago. Done what? This. <laughs> he didn't even see it coming. <laughs> That's not how you use a shield. <laughs> what is this? This is so uncoordinated. I love it so much. <laughs> not into the restaurant. Keep it into the streets, guys. Oh, now we're ruining a meal. Happy birthday oh. to you. Happy birthday to you! Yep, keep it going, guys. <laughs> it's raining That was iconic. Iconic. They were like, we gotta pause for the birthday. That's a tradition. That has to happen. <laughs> and they didn't smash the cake, which makes me very happy. Y'all are gonna have to pay for that window. <laughs> oh my god, did he die? Not him just walking it off. Y'all broke a restaurant's window and you're walking it off. Oh, he's back to life, okay. Let's go back upstairs. I think you need to go to the hospital. We belong together, Jones. Why? Cite your sources. If I can't make it with you, I can't make it with anyone. Hot mess, no go. You deserve better than him, Bridget. That's not a good enough offer for me. There we go. She has a whole friend group that loves her as she is. And they were there to celebrate her birthday because they love her. You thought she was gonna be alone on her birthday. Embarrassing. Oh, Mark. This was a bad time of year for him. You know, his Japanese wife left him on Christmas Day. She ran off with his best friend from Cambridge. Where were you with the truth a year ago, ma'am? I knew the flags were flagging the wrong way. Like, Daniel was just giving too many red flags for that story to be him. I love his tie. You once said that you like me just as I am, and... I just wanted to say likewise. You were stupid things your mum buys you. Tonight's another classic. Don't you dare come for his snowman tie. Rethink the length of your sideburns. What? She said you said that you liked me as I am, despite the fact that I'm not so great at public speaking and I have a tendency to just say everything, and I'm gonna put that to the test. She is just like very neurodivergent and I do love her. It's just like you're really coming for him. And he looks just fine as he is. Just as you look just fine as you are. And we, in turn, have been blessed with our son, Mark. We all have been, really. He has just been invited to be a senior partner in the firm of Abbott and Abbott in New York. In New York? To Mark and his No! <gasps> no! It's such a terrible pity. Where are you going with this? For England. It's the loss of a whole country. She's pulling out her strength, public speaking. <laughs> Oh my goodness. You gotta love though, how Colin Firth constantly can act like he's falling in love at any minute. Oh, look, you have a great friend group, a job that you're actually decent at, and a really large apartment. You've got this. We've decided we're gonna take you to Paris for the Why? weekend so you can forget about everything, particularly forget about Mark Darcy. You live somewhere you could just go to Paris for the weekend. <sighs> I love her life. Has he ever actually stuck his fucking tongue down your fucking throat? No. But his words entered your heart, and is that not better? I just know that this friend group in Paris is gonna be wreaking havoc. Bridget. Hi. Oh my gosh. Well, I realized I've forgotten to um kiss you goodbye, do you mind? He came back 
16 hours in the air. I'll be right with you. I swear to you, if she's about to change her underwear out of granny panties, he would appreciate the granny pants. No, that's not fair. You don't get to read it from a diary when you said something to your mother and she overheard it. That's like the equivalent of writing it in a diary. Oh, God. Oh, that's pretty bad. That's pretty, right. pretty bad. Not him thinking he turned down a whole job promotion for this. Mark! Yikes. Pants. Put the pants on in a jacket. She's running for love. Mind your business, folks. Keep calm and carry on and all that jazz. Just a woman running in her underwear. Her best underwear. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You got it. You didn't even flip to the back. You know, I'm sure she's got some happier things to say about you as the pages progress. She didn't say it out loud. And she says a lot of things out loud, okay? The fact she didn't say any of that out loud says something. I know that. I was just buying you a new one. I to make a new start, perhaps. He had me in the first half, I'm not gonna lie. This is a Christmas miracle, y'all. The people on this street should be clapping. Clap, folks. You're not showing enough appreciation for the miracle of young love. <laughs> oh, I cannot believe she's standing out here in her underwear. He has gloves on. Nice boys don't kiss like that. At least they fucking do. <laughs> oh my god. I actually got lipstick on my hand when I did that. Iconic. No one's doing it like them. No one's doing it like them. Exactly. Exactly the best type of story. I hope they're not about to cut to her running naked in his backyard. Oh no. She's thriving though. Look at her. She's so free and happy. Nice guys don't kiss like that. Yes, they fucking do. Yes. Yes. Who is doing it like them? 10 out of 10 experience. Absolutely love that. You know, there is an art to the rom-com that I feel like the British have nailed. And perhaps I'm just saying that as someone who has The Decoy Bride as one of their favorite films and also really loves Rye Lane. But there's just something so special about a British rom-com, you know? Anyways, thank you guys for watching this with me. I hope you had some fun. Um, and I will see you for the next one. See ya.